uh, we are going to see needle cricothyrotomy, surgical cricothyrotomy, PDT, percutaneous cricothyrotomy, uh, dilational cricothyrotomy. So, cricothyrotomy two types, needle and surgical. When you make an incision in the cricothyrotomy membrane, it is called a surgical. When you don't make an incision, it is needle cricothyrotomy. So, the indication is going to be only one, CVCA situation. CVCA, we plan for uh, cricothyrotomy, that is our indication. Consider the patient, as we are trying uh, all measures of intubation, everything failed, we landed up in CVC way, saturation is 80, we are going to plan for surgical cricothyrotomy. Melker, the company is available kit. There are a lot of uh, companies with uh, Melker. Most common or most successful needle cricothyrotomy is Melker. One is a 5mm cuffed cricothyrotomy tube. And one is a dilator. This is called as obturator. It is missing. The obturator will be attached. See, again, this is a very, emer uh, this is a very emergent situation. We should not wait, waste time. So, everything is prefixed. So, the obturator is inside the 5mm cricothyrotomy kit and a guide wire and a needle and a syringe is there. So, again, cricothyroid membrane we are supposed to palpate. So, one thing is called as laryngeal handshake. Instead of doing just a two dimensional structure, we are supposed to do a laryngeal handshake so that we understand the cricothyroid as a three dimensional structure because it is a tube. We are approaching the trachea. So, we are going to do a laryngeal handshake. Two fingers over the thyroid cartilage, one in the midline, palpate, hyoid bone, thyroid cartilage, tracing down, uh, dip is there, followed by a heart structure, that is cricoid. So, the dip is the cricothyroid membrane. It is one, one centimeter length and two centimeter width. So, what we are going to do is, if time permits, put the patient in position. When you extend the neck, the strap muscles move laterally, so that the anatomical structure which we want to puncture will come forwards. It will be superficial. So again, what we are going to do is, if time permits, do uh, st uh, sterile precautions. Take the syringe and the needle, little bit of saline or local anesthetics. Palpate the cricothyroid membrane by laryngeal handshake. Once you are inside, uh, reach the membrane, puncture it. Once you are inside, you will get a loss of resistance. Aspirate for air. Remove this and you can insert the J-tipped atraumatic guide wire. We are going to insert the J-tip automatic header. Once it reaches adequate depth, we are going to remove it. See, this obturator is missing here, so it will be inside, so that the tip is tapered. What we are going to do is, we are going to place it over there. Once we are very near, we can make an incision in the skin, only skin. Put adequate jelly. Railroad the cricothyrotomy tube. Once cuff pass on, on, we are supposed to remove the whole assembly, inflate the cuff, tie it, check for capnography, then tie it. So, this is the Melker needle cricothyrotomy technique. Now, this is not available here actually, this will be attached. It will be attached so that, uh, yeah, it will be attached, you can just remove it. See, it, will, it is like this. This is for a tracheostomy, you know. So that uh, the sharp edge is there, so the skin and soft tissue will not get into that room. It will go easily. So the whole assembly with the curvature you are supposed to push it inside, then remove the adapter, uh, the, the operator along with the guide wire. This is Melker cricothyrotomy kit commercially available. Smith and so many other technique uh, kits are available, but the problem with other techniques is the posterior trachealar puncture is very common. This is not associated with higher puncture. So, what happens if you accidentally puncture posterior tracheal wall, you go beyond uh, the posterior tracheal wall, we are going to worsen the situation by creating a pneumomediastry. So, this is associated with little bit better. That itself is less than 30 percent. So, now we will see the IDA recommended surgical airway technique. Uh, as Nagit sir was saying, saying today, le, surgical techniques are associated with better success rate. So, what we want is IDA recommendation on the, we need a 6 millimeter diameter a cuffed endotracheal tube, a 10 size blade, okay. The 10 size blade, uh, the importance is the length is smaller. So again, this is an advantage that we are not going to puncture the posterior tracheal wall. If longer blades if you use, you are going to puncture the posterior tracheal wall with a handle. So again, all indications and positions are same. Here what we are going to do is palpate the cricothyroid membrane, take the needle, take the blade. We are going to make a vertical stab incision. 
So the incision is transverse over the C. Consider this is the head end of the patient, foot end of the patient. We are standing on the left side, okay? Head end is here. So we are going to make a transverse incision over the cricothyroid membrane. Then rotate it with the sharp end facing downwards. Change the hand. Just lateralize the See, consider it as a bougie actually. Huh? So what we are going to do is insert the bougie inside. Once it is inside, then you can fix it. Railroad the notochordal tube inside. Remove the bougie. Inflate the cuff. Then check for capnography for correct position. So the 6 millimeter internal diameter tube, why they recommend is, this is the minimal size of a tube which through which we can easily ventilate an adult patient without much resistance. Carbon dioxide also has to be eliminated. The purpose is that. That's why they recommend at least a 6 size endotracheal tube. Again, the blade should be 10 blade. So this kit should be there. Sometimes uh, even Buji anatomy lands would land work difficult or when, there, when there is a difficult like obese patient. Once make a stab incision, rotate the, tra uh, rotate the scalpel, do a finger dissection. Try to do a finger dissection until you reach trachea nicely. Then insert the bougie, then you railroad the endotracheal tube over there. So this is associated with after simulation training. This is associated with up to 90-92% success rate. Literature says, okay. This is again, so it's an emergency procedure. We are going to make a, a transverse stab incision. Make sure you are not going too deep so that you are not puncturing the tracheal, posterior tracheal. Usually it's up to 1.5 centimeter diameter. So we are not going to puncture mostly, but still the chances are there, okay. So we are going to perpendicularly make an stab incision.